I've declared war on the teachers' unions, but if you don't have your education system right, you don't have your economy right, and then you can't have national security right. So I would argue that we should strongly consider using some kind of national security executive order or national security imperative to overrule some powers that the teachers' unions have, because apparently they're one of the biggest obstacles to really everything. The teachers' unions are an extinction risk to the United States. It's that bad. That's not hyperbole. The teachers' unions are an extinction risk to the republic. You know, the the physical land will still be here, but the republic can't stand as long as the teachers' unions remain in their current form. It just can't happen. I mean, if you don't have a hundred-year plan for your, you know, your uh, your country, you're not doing it right. You, know, you should be looking at all the things you need to get going to be as safe as possible in the future. So the school system has got to be number one, right? Maybe not. Actually, the other one might be number one. The second one is nuclear energy. And the argument is not just about powering you know, current stuff on Earth. The argument is that nuclear power is what will, um, what will power space um, exploration, space ships, space colonies. Whoever owns space will own the Earth. I've declared war on the teachers' unions, and here's the logic to it. The most important thing in the country is national defense. Would you agree? I mean, assuming that we can eat, national defense is probably number one. Because you've got to get that right before you can get anything else right. Now, national defense is somewhat interchangeable with economics, meaning that if you have enough money, you can actually, you don't even need an army if you have enough money. You can bribe people, you can make deals with them, you can make them happier to do business with you than to conquer you. So money and economics are very, uh, I'm sorry, economics and the military are kind of substitutes. And you need lots of money to have a really strong military. So if you say, well, we'll concentrate on the military but not the economy, well, you're doing it wrong because that's not a thing. You have to have a strong economy. They're, they're connected. The other thing that's connected is our education system. There's no such thing as a strong economy with a weak education system. That's not a thing. It can't be a thing. So if you don't have your education system right, you don't have your economy right, and then you can't have national security right. So I would argue that we should strongly consider using some kind of national security executive order or national security imperative to overrule some powers that the teachers' unions have, because apparently they're one of the biggest obstacles to really everything. Because uh, at the moment, they're the biggest obstacle to reopening the schools, which is a challenge to the economy, which is a challenge to national security. Our entire standing in the world is now at risk to some radicals and teachers' unions who are are demanding things like uh, defunding the police before they go back to, to teach. This is crazy stuff. But beyond that, it's much, much deeper. Because the teachers' unions are the the force that keep um, schools from having as much competition as they could, from firing bad teachers to get better ones in there. Really, all forms of change are limited by by the teachers' unions. And that is a critical problem for the country. The teachers' unions are an extinction risk to the United States. It's that bad. That's not hyperbole. The teachers' unions are an extinction risk to the republic. You know, the the physical land will still be here, but the republic can't stand as long as the teachers' unions remain in their current form. It just can't happen. And so we have to start being smarter and tougher about what we think about protecting the country. If you want to protect the country, you're going to have to defeat the teachers' unions, and you're going to need to do it quickly. I think it needs to happen 
before the end of the year. So before the end of the year, if we haven't dismantled the teachers' unions, we're not getting off to a good start. And China's going to have a, a big advantage there. So uh, I'd like to see some kind of executive order to... Uh, I don't know exactly what it would take, either to limit their power. There's, there's at least one movement that I don't know too much about, but I'm going to look into it. There, there's some legal precedents that would allow union members to stop paying dues, but to still be in the union. Have you heard of that? So apparently that's a thing, but I don't know the details yet. So there are some uh, teachers' unions in which the teachers themselves are organizing to discontinue paying dues, but still remain in the union. Because if you take the money out of the union, then the union leaders don't really have a reason to be there. You know, they don't have a reason to, to do whatever they're doing. If you strip the money out of them, it's going to reduce their power. So that effort is going ongoing. Um, so that you'll see grassroots movements to defund the teachers' unions, but I think we need something from the top. Because to me, this is a commander-in-chief decision. Literally a commander-in-chief decision. There, there are two areas where I think the commander-in-chief decision has to be central. One is this, uh, because if you're looking at national defense, you can't look at it as a, as a one- to five-year situation. If you're looking at national defense, you have to look at it as, as a hundred-year plan, right? I mean, if you don't have a hundred-year plan for your, you know, your, uh, your country, you're not doing it right. You, know, you should be looking at all the things you need to get going to be as safe as possible in the future. So the school system has got to be number one. Right? Maybe not. Actually, the other one might be number one. The second one is nuclear energy. And the argument is not just about powering you know, current stuff on Earth. The argument is that nuclear power is what will, um, what will power space um, exploration, space ships, space colonies. Whoever owns space will own the Earth. So if we're not building a, a robust best-in-class nuclear energy industry on, in this country to handle all of the nuclear energy issues, both domestic, military, and, and space, which is also military in part. If we're not doing all of that, and we're not the number one country in that, whoever is will own space. And whoever owns space owns it all. Because you know the, the high... The high ground is going to be incredibly important for any military. And also resources, because the, apparently the, the rare resources from asteroids, etc., are, are just insanely valuable. So Commander-in-Chief needs to work against school unions and education in general, just to make that as powerful as possible. I think the entire education system needs to be rethought from the ground up to, to make it something that works in the modern world, because uh, I don't think there's anybody who would disagree that the things that are taught in school are not the things that a modern student needs to learn. You know, some are, but a lot of it is, you, you really, you would probably change 40% of what the kids learn to, to get to where it needs to be for the modern world. All right, so that's it. Teachers' unions got to go.